Proudly, we hail. New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story is entitled, The Quiet Sergeant. It's a story about how Sergeant Tim O'Cleary changed from a fast-talking, cheerful soldier to a quiet sergeant. And the change worries his friends, so much so that they do something about it. And in doing something, they find a strange story that has roots back in World War II. Our first act curtain rises in just a moment. But first, the United States Army needs trained technical specialists. Young man, there's a golden opportunity for you as a qualified high school graduate to master a specialty of your own choice. And at the same time, you'll enjoy all the benefits and advantages of a career in the Army. Before you enlist, you can select the course for which you're best suited from more than 100 courses in a wide variety of technical and administrative specialties. A place in the class will be reserved for you while you complete your basic training. For complete information, See your local Army recruiter. And now, your United States Army presents the proudly we hail production, The Quiet Sergeant. B-34. O'Cleary, how many more spaces do you have? Two. I got it in the bag. This is O'Cleary night tonight. O-23. O-23. Do I see a smile on the face of Sergeant O'Cleary? You see a smile, all right. <laughs> I got one space left, my good Corporal Edwards. M-6. What? Come on, come on, come on. Don't keep me in suspense. I have a message for all members of the 3rd Battalion who are here in the service club. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's probably parked in the wrong place. There's a lot of 3rd Battalion men here. Oh, here I sit, just one space away from the Grand Prize. Here's the message. Major Andrews wants all members of the 3rd Battalion to know that the battalion has gotten movement orders. All non-commissioned officers will report to battalion headquarters immediately. Hey. How about giving us the last number, huh? Who's that, O'Cleary? Yeah. Uh, this won't be your number, Sergeant O'Cleary, but here it is. I-22. Bingo! Oh, uh, Eddie, Eddie, I was born under the wrong uh, star. Or you picked the wrong bingo card. Uh, we might as well go find out what's cooking. Hey, you know something? I heard a good joke today. Huh? There were two soldiers out on rifle range. So Sergeant O'Cleary and I started for the meeting. On the way, O'Cleary was his usual good-humored self, full of jokes, peppy and happy. <laughs> he was always happy. But the meeting changed his whole outlook. Funny thing how plain words can change a man. A few words. The Major talked about sudden changes and where we were going. Didn't seem important at first. And then he threw the bomb. So, as a gyroscope unit, we're slated to go to France instead of Japan. I'm sure that this will please the whole battalion. I could see that O'Cleary wasn't pleased. The smile fell off his face so quick I almost expected to hear it hit the floor. It was kind of funny. O'Cleary had been talking about gyroscope how whole units get reassigned and how great it would be to move out with the same buddies and move back with the same buddies. O'Cleary liked the gyroscope idea because he wanted to keep his friends. Yet there he was looking sour. I, I, I couldn't figure it. The Major gave us a lot of details because this was going to be a pretty fast move to France and all the time he was talking, O'Cleary had that look a fellow gets when he learns that his battalion has been picked as the punkest in the entire regiment. After the meeting, he disappeared, and I didn't see him for three days. When I did, I got another puzzler. He came into my supply room. Ed, how are you stocked with cold weather clothes? Huh? Come again? Cold weather gear, special socks, shoes, the works. Well, you don't get that stuff issued for a trip to France, O'Cleary. You know that. I'm not going to France. 
And we're all going to France. Well, there's certain regulations about not moving out with a gyroscoping unit. I'm uh, re-enlisting and I'm asking for Alaska. Now, if it isn't too much trouble, how about cold weather togs? Well, I don't have any. Okay, thanks. I was floored. I looked at the closed door and tried to figure it out. Sergeant Tim O'Cleary, a guy who liked the Army, liked to travel, got along with everybody, the best man I ever saw in an artillery battery, was going to desert his buddies, going to apply for Alaska. Well, now, I knew he could do it if he said he could. I knew that when a man re-enlists, he can ask for another assignment. I made up my mind right then and there. I'd find out what was bothering Tim O'Cleary. So first thing I did was to sound out the other soldiers to see if they knew what was happening. Well, they didn't. Nobody had any idea. They were just as puzzled as I was. Then I went right to the top to Major Andrews. He was sympathetic and he said he'd see Tim. Well, the next few days I waited. I heard that Major Andrews had called Sergeant Cle O'Cleary to his office. And then I heard that Sergeant O'Cleary had applied for re-enlistment and transfer. So I figured that the Major hadn't had him change his mind. I figured I might as well give up when at the Friday night bingo game at the service club, I ran into O'Cleary again. Now, was I supposed to tell him he was a little goofy? Or should I say that he was right? Well, I decided I'd better play it off the top of my head. I'd better wait and hear just what it was all about. After the game, we walked over to his room and closed the door. Hi, right, take my favorite chair, kiddo. Huh? Yeah, don't mind if I do. I uh, guess I might as well tell you, Major Andrews called me in. No. Yeah, he said uh, he heard I was thinking of uh, transferring. And? Oh, you know Major Andrews, nice guy, but he doesn't waste time getting to the point. He wanted to know why I didn't like France. He put his finger right smack on the whole trouble. Then that is the trouble. Yeah, that's it. I just couldn't tell him. He was nice about it, asked me to reconsider, talk it over with a friend, he said. So I'm going to... Rest easy, this is a long story. I'm easy. Well, first, I, I, I had a brother. He was in World War II, Timberwolf Division under General Terry Allen. Anyway, he was a pretty good soldier. Went from buck private to sergeant first class. They called them technical sergeants in those days. In pretty quick time. Made the promotions on maneuvers by working hard. I remember his letters home. He, he sure liked his outfit and the fellows in his company. They, they must have been pretty good. All big guys from Oregon. Well, anyway, uh, they went overseas in August of 1944. I think it was the uh, first convoy to unload troops right on the beaches after D-Day. The rest were going to England. He was riding pretty steadily to me, and I... I didn't know where he was, of course, because he couldn't tell me. But I followed the activities of his outfit in the papers. Well, General Patton was out in front somewhere, smashing through, and Joe's outfit trailed along in case they were needed. Then the regiment broke up in battalions and companies and moved into small town on guard and occupation duty. And that's... Uh, that's when it happened. What happened? Well, that's the trouble. I, I, I haven't been able to get the whole story. First, though, Joe went on some kind of special duty. He was transferred out of the division with about ten other fellows. From then on, there's just rumors. He was in a place called La Seuss near a bigger town called Le Mans. Yes, I've heard of Le Mans. It's, it's pretty big. Well, he was there for a while doing what I haven't been able to find out. And that... Yeah, Tim, go on. I can't tell you. Maybe some other time. Tim O'Cleary walked right out of the door without looking back. He just couldn't tell me, whatever it was. It was sort of like having a sore inside his chest, I think. Something would touch it, and he couldn't talk. I figured there was no use going after him, so after a while, when he didn't come back, I went down to the supply room and did a little book work. When a battalion moves and your shop has the clothing and equipment records of most of the stuff that's moving in your company, you'd better have it right. Then I got a telephone call from a guy who worked in the personnel section. B Company Supply, Corporal Edwards speaking. Hey, Eddie. O'Cleary withdrew his transfer. He's re-enlisted to go with us. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. Thanks. Uh, Harris, Thompson, take over. Okay, Sergeant O'Cleary. Now put down that duty roster. What? 
What's eating you? I have an idea that you want to fight with yourself. I'm also telling you that I want to help you. I don't know why you were afraid to go to France, but you battled the feeling and you won the battle. I want to help. But I can't help unless you let me in on the whole thing. You know I won't tell anybody. I know you won't. Okay, we'll spell it. Huh. I'm going to sit here until you do. Oh, you sure are a persistent character. <laughs> you just got the news? Yeah, just. I, I came right over. Well, maybe two heads are better than one. Every time. Except when you buy hats. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, Eddie, you're good for me. <laughs> you're right. I decided to face it. I decided to go check into the whole thing. You see, after the war, after my brother Joe disappeared, a soldier who had been a prisoner said he saw Joe in a German uniform. What? Yeah, it's the last word we ever got. This soldier said that Joe recognized him and looked right through him. Later, the soldier escaped when the German paratroopers, they were men behind our lines, they dropped in, had a firefight. Last he saw of Joe was him running with the other German soldiers. One thing I, I didn't tell you, Joe and I were raised by our grandmother who taught him German. Joe spoke it good, no accent at all. Well, no wonder France brings unpleasant memories. Uh, I, I, I don't know whether he was afraid to write or not about his job. We're sure he was killed, but what... What hurts is that he might have been doing things the Army didn't know about. Tim. Yeah? Did he ever sound like he favored the other side? Never, no, no. I guess that's why I finally decided to go search for something else. I don't, I don't know what. Well, the whole story is that... Well, it's what you've got to look for. The real story of Joe. Even if it hurts you more, you've got to try to find it. You've got to prove that he died honorably, like the Army thought. That's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to take leave after we've settled in France and go right to those places where he was seen. I, I, I still can't believe that Joe was a deserter. I gotta prove he wasn't. The army gave him a posthumous medal. Tim, I don't believe it either. And by golly, we'll prove that he wasn't. We'll return for the second act of The Quiet Sergeant in just a moment. Young man, now you can join the United States Army and take your choice of travel. Under the Army's Operation Gyroscope, whole units move together, train together, and stay together. You can choose your destination before you enlist. If you want to serve with men you know and like, ask your local recruiting sergeant about Operation Gyroscope. He'll give you the full story on the planned travel system. You'll find him listed in your phone directory, and there's no obligation for complete information. You're listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of The Quiet Sergeant. So we went to Le Mans. In case you don't know, it isn't easy to get to Le Mans from Paris. We changed trains three times, one time too much, I expect, and finally, Le Mans. We went straight to the city hall, and there, after fiddling around a while with people who couldn't really understand what we wanted, we found Gaston. Gaston ran the elevator. And as soon as he saw us, he brightened. Oh, pardon, monsieur. Uh, Americans, yes? <laughs> you sure <guys>. are. <laughs> if I may be so bold, may I have a good American cigarette? Oh, why not? Here. Ah. Well, aren't you going to smoke it? Oh, but no. Only with a glass of Pernod will I smoke a good American cigarette. Oh. Uh, now, may I take you up in my good ascenseur? Uh, elevator. <laughs> <laughs> Matilda. I name her Matilda because, like my mother-in-law, she's slow arising. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, maybe you can tell us who to see here in the city hall. We want information about an American soldier who was in this neighborhood during World War II. Oh, then we shall not ride upstairs in Matilda. I, Gaston, am the greatest living authority on American soldiers who were in Le Mans in World War II. Maybe I forget a few names, but I remember many things. In those days, I was a cook for many American, uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, outfits. That's yeah? right, outfits. 
Uh, do you have time to talk? Oh, yes. My son is due to take Matilda in a few minutes. If you'll be so kind as to wait, I, I, I will take the old lady up to his office. He is a city councilman as well as my assistant. I am the former mayor. Uh, you see, and um, I have uh, many contacts. Uh, excuse me, please. Well, there he goes. To turn Matilda over to the city councilman. <laughs> I think we have a character on our hands. <laughs> I think we've got a gold mine. This Gaston will find out plenty if he doesn't know himself. Oh, I hope you're right. And uh, now, monsieur, into my candy store here in the lobby. What? A candy store, too? Uh, a man must make a living. <laughs> No, right here, gentlemen. Now, please be seated. Uh, now, gentlemen, why are you here? Mr. Gaston, after the Germans left Le Mans in 1944, there were a, a few attempts made to rescue hidden German soldiers here, weren't there? Oh, yes. There were many soldiers who were cut off and hid in our cellars. Most of them were captured. I myself found two and turned them over to your military police. Do you remember any German paratroops shooting in here to help get the soldiers out? Mm, uh, let me think. Let me think. I watched Tim's face as Gaston sat there thinking. It was sort of worried. He was hoping to get clues. And he was afraid that he would get clues that would prove the army wrong about Joe. Me, I sat there and hoped hard that something would turn up to clear his brother once and for all. But Gaston began to shake his head. Then he told us that there hadn't been any paratroopers jumping into Le Mans. If there had been, he would remember. It looked as though this was the first false start. And there, there weren't any? I am positive that there were none. Not in Le Mans. No, not in Le Mans. Tell us, Gaston, were there any American soldiers captured here by Germans after the German army cleared out? Oh, 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 now that is different. There were some soldiers captured, but they were released very quickly when the Germans were discovered. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, not here in Le Mans, but in La Suze, near here. La Suze. La Suze. Oh, you have heard of La Suze? Yes, yes, we have. Tell us about La Suze. Uh, I heard that La Suze had many Germans hiding right after their army left. There, uh, there was uh, trouble. In fact, uh, your army had agents operating there, searching them out. Agents? Oh, yes. American soldiers who spoke German, but uh, sometimes posed as Germans to seek out uh, other Germans. It was dangerous work. Sergeant, do you think Joe was an agent? I'd like to think so. The only way to find out is to go there. Gaston, could you spare the time to take us to La Suze? Spare the time? <laughs> Listen, American soldiers. Many was the cold night I ate hot American food during the Great War. And those soldiers never asked me for money. So, I have the time. All the time you want. Mm. Well, I'm certainly happy that the soldiers of World War II acted the way they did. Sort of... One good turn deserves another, eh, Gaston? That is correct, soldier. But now, being that I own the taxicab company of Le Mans, I should be happy to use our best cab. Uh, one moment, please. <laughs> what a character. <laughs> but he's got a heart as big as his head. Well, mostly because he has good memories of the soldiers who were so nice to him. Uh, the cab is waiting. He's the best taxi I have in the company. In fact, uh, <laughs> It is the only one I have in the company. <laughs> uh, Gaston, I hate to say this, but isn't that a German staff car vintage of 1942 or so? Uh, yes, yes, I liberated it. Mm. La Belle France had more need of it than the, the retreating army. <laughs> uh, now we go to La Suze. Uh, please, 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 handle the doors with care. You will notice that the wire holding on the door is a veritable grandfather, yes? No, don't worry. <laughs> we'll be careful. At La Suze, there have been soldiers from at least three wars. You will see all kinds of signs. Maybe you will see an old trench from the Franco-Prussian War, then another from 1915, and then the Great War. All the soldiers built things that are still there in La Suze. 
There are houses that were built by the Prussians when were occupied by the French, and then by the Germans, and finally by the Americans. This I'm going to show you. Eddie, Eddie, I, I, I think we better tell Gaston all about our trip, what we're trying to find. W will you do it, please? Okay. Uh, Gaston, we, uh, we want to tell you why we are here. Yes. Yes, I am very curious. We're looking for Sergeant O'Cleary's brother. I ought to say, a trace of Sergeant O'Cleary's brother. His name was Joe. He disappeared somewhere near here. Now, the sergeant knows he is dead, and the army says so, too. But he wants to find out what happened. Now, I told the whole story, and Gaston kept quiet and listened. Every once in a while, he'd shake his head slowly, as if in pity for Sergeant O'Cleary. I didn't hold back anything. I told about Joe's knowing German, about his special assignment that we couldn't prove, and about his being seen in a German uniform. Gaston waited until I'd finished, and he drove a little while, and then started talking. Ah, oh, yes, there were many tragedies in the war. Many people disappeared, many of my own friends. To find what happened to an American soldier, oh, that is going to be very difficult. You see, I met many German soldiers, too. Some were fine boys, on the wrong side, yes. Boys who had to come here because of Hitler. They did not like Hitler. I will try very hard to help you. And now, gentlemen, we come to La Suze, and from now on, we shall walk. This old motor will sour the milk in the cows. <laughs> <laughs> there is a farmhouse just behind that bend. The farmer's name is Dupois. He's very crusty. So you please stay here and I will talk to him. I'll not be long. All right, Gaston. Tim, look over there. Yeah. Stone barn. Yeah. Looks like the artillery pulverized. They fought a war here, all right. Pretty here, though, huh? Oh, la, 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 la. He's a crabby old man. But he did tell me that no military men stayed in this house, and he did not get to know any. He stayed in the cellar all the time. Mm. Uh, well, here we go. We shall go on now. That uh, crusty one says there is a farmhouse ahead that had soldiers in it during the war. And uh, also there is a graveyard where there are four German soldiers, but no names. The people did not know their names. Okay. Let's go. We rode that last half mile like fellas going into battle. Tim was quiet. Even Gaston thought he'd better not talk. Something about Sergeant O'Cleary's face told him that this wasn't the time for his humor. It was very pretty country. And when we stopped, Gaston went up to the house and talked to an old lady who came to the door. Uh, Tim and I went around back to see the graves. Uh, four graves. It says on each, an unknown German soldier. Hey, Eddie. Yeah? I've seen military graveyards in at least five countries. But this one makes me feel funny. What is it? Oh, you're tired. You're all burned out from thinking. We'll go back to Le Mans when Gaston comes back. He can find us some quarters, and then we'll go back to the outfit. Oh, hold on. Here comes Gaston. Hey, soldier, soldier. Huh? The old lady, she says that there were paratroopers who came from the skies here, German paratroopers, and they captured many American soldiers who later got away. Did you give her the description of Joe that Eddie gave you? No, uh, please, don't rush me, eh? Uh, <clears throat> There were three German soldiers, finally, and they were hiding here, and she understood that more would come from the skies. Every night they would stand and make signals at German airplanes that sometimes flew overhead, but no more came, and she says they got worried that uh, there were many Americans not far away. Then one night, another German came, and he said he had come, too, from the sky, and he moved in with the other three. They had this fight, and suddenly... The three who came first began shooting at the other one. They shot him, but he threw a hand grenade at them and killed them. Grandmother says that she carried the last one into the barn and put him in the bunk he had built. 
And there, he died. He is buried with the others. He managed to tell her that he was not a German. He was an American agent, and they shot him when he tried to take them to the Americans. Grandmother says that he was an American. He told her, but he did not tell her his name. Well, I'll never know. I'll try to think this is Joe. If it was, he's the kind of soldier I thought he'd be right at the end. Gaston, where did she say she put the last soldier? In the bunk he had built in the barn. Tim, let's go have a look. Oh, what's the use? A look won't hurt. A soldier who knows he'll never get back to his army might... Well, he might... Well, let's look. Hmm. And the bunk is still here. So now I've seen it. Let's go. Oh, wait a minute. Tim! Look. Look, cut into the wood. Joe. USA. <laughs> you, you don't have to say anything. I, I think I shall find out from Grandma which grave is his, huh? Then uh, you might want to go there. And that's how Sergeant Tim O'Cleary got his smile back. And his faith in his brother. Nothing will hold him back now. Sergeant Joe O'Cleary had passed on to the soldiers Valhalla, an almost unrecognized hero, fighting his own battle in a stone barn in a small town in France. He passed on to Tim O'Cleary, the sergeant stripes he wore with honor and distinction. Here's a message for high school graduates. The Reserve for You program of the United States Army is especially designed for training qualified high school graduates in more than 150 technical and administrative specialties. If you have the right qualifications, you will find the course that suits you best in electronics, mechanics, personnel management, photography, public information, communications, and many others. For complete information on the Reserved for You program, see your local Army recruiter. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army. This is Ralph Rowland inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>